What is happening guys, Cowboy here, and welcome to my Hatchets build for Neo 2. Now Hatchets are a pretty interesting weapon. They scale off of the skill stats similar to dual swords, and while they seemingly lack in the raw damage potential of dual swords, they make up for it in the ability to throw the Hatchets out and deal buttloads of damage from a middle range. Now, when I say mid-range, I'm referring to enemies that are kind of closing in on you. Anything that's long range, you're not going to be doing hatchet throws. You'd obviously still use your bow or your rifle for that. But anything in the mid to close category, you can chuck out your hatchets and do some pretty beefy damage. And under the right circumstances, and if you build around them, you can get these hatchet throws to be absolutely dirty. I'm talking like 5,000 damage on a high stance charged hatchet throw. So to jump on into the build, first up, let's talk about the sets and then look at where we get them. Now hatchets only have one set going for them at the moment and that is the bold and the boorish set fortunately it's actually a pretty solid set we get some attack defense with hatchets we get high attack damage which is the primary stance we're going to be in we get some life and then damage taken mid attack which will allow us to trade a little bit we're going to combine this with three pieces from saika's yadagarasu set to pick up life drain on bullseye which can actually proc off your high stance hatchet throws if you hit somebody in the head some dodge key consumption and an extra five percent melee damage now Let's jump into where we get these sets since obviously there's only really one hatchet set in the game and as you can probably guess you farm it off of the hatchet man oni shibata now i would suggest farming the rest of spirit submission this involves you fighting through two waves of yokai and then you're immediately at the boss it's a lot faster to farm them here than in the main story mission but one thing i want to point out are the rewards in New Game Plus, you will get both the helm and the chest piece from fighting him in Restless Spirits. Whereas if we hop on over to Twilight and go to Ruin Draws Near, notice that the rewards are the waist, the gloves, and the pants. Or excuse me, waist, gloves, and boots. So point being, it's going to be very easy for you to put this set together, but the earliest you can get this set is going to be the Twilight region. So this is more of a mid to late game oriented build. Um, if you are only a new game and you don't have access to stuff like the Yasukani, I would instead suggest just running the full board and board set. It's actually a pretty decent set and the 20% key recovery speed is nice, but we're not going to need that because we have access to stuff like barrier talisman. Um, now moving on to Saika's Yadagarasu set, this one you can actually farm up pretty early here in the Dawn region. Now, while you can go ahead and fight him on the main mission Pervading Waters, instead I'd suggest farming him on the submission The Third Word. This is a 1v1 duel against Saika and it's very easy to just beat him up here as much as you need until you have the pieces of gear that he wants, which would be his sword, his rifle, and one piece of his gear, in which I would suggest the headband, just since you can hide headband and that way you still maintain the sexy Shibata look. Now, technically you could just refashion your armor to look like whatever you want, but that's beyond the point. Anyway, moving on into the stats. So when it comes to the hatchets, obviously we want to have attack bonus skill. Skill is the primary stat for the scaling here, and we're also gonna remodel to make that an A scaling. Beyond that, we're looking at a lot of stuff that affects skill damage and high stance. So active skill key consumption, high active skill key damage, and active skill break. All of our charged hatchet throws are considered skills and not attacks. So because of that, boosting that skill damage is gonna be important to get the most out of those hatchet throws. As for your Hachu Nembutsu, doesn't matter. This is just here to help get us the set bonus. As for our first bow, I'd suggest Warrior of the West. This is gonna give us a life bonus, which is pretty nice. And then our secondary, we're going to want the Raven Wing Rifle. This obviously to help get us the set bonus, so what we have on this does not matter. Moving on down, I'd suggest the headband and the helm slot. You can see I only have this as purple. As for stats you're looking for, we're, this is a very tanky build. So we want things like life, projectile damage taken, defense, toughness, those are all going to be good stats to have. See life, faster winter recovery, fall damage and defense, toughness, attack, projectile damage taken, defense. Instead of attack, you could actually roll uh, attack, defense, hatchets on the gloves as well if you want to be even tankier. Uh, life, projectile damage taken, tenacity, defense, dash key consumption, defense, toughness, projectile damage taken. So you kind of get the gist here. We're looking to be pretty, to pretty uh, beefy with this build. And part of the reason for that is when it comes to using hatchets, they actually trade quite a bit. Um, I wouldn't say they trade quite as much as something like Odachi, but because you're going to be charging up hatchet throws 
and you're going to be kind of in the fray. Um, this is more of a trade oriented build, but it does perform very well in that regard. Now, obviously, to pull off this full set, you're going to need a Yasukani Magatama. As for my Yasukani, this is my go to farming Yasukani, so you can kind of ignore the stats on it. Um, but, you know, Soul Core Luck, Item Drop, Elemental Damage Taken. And Elemental Damage Taken in particular is the one thing I think is worth rolling on both of your accessories for a build like this. It's just going to make you that much tankier. Moving on down onto our readies, we're going to have Purification Talisman. This is just going to help us to lock down Yokai. Uh, hatchets just by default have a lot of abilities that shred humans, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So Purification helps make up for that when it comes to fighting Yokai. Barrier Talisman, we're essentially picking this up because it's obviously awesome with the key recovery, but this also allows us to not worry about the 7 piece set bonus since Barrier Talisman will be superior. We're going to run Steel Talisman to boost our defense even further, and this is because we have a special buff that will give us speed and attack but lower our defense, so we want to offset that. And then on over into the second tab, a couple of quick change scrolls, and lastly, you're going to want some small spirit stones, which we're going to get into in a second. Now, similar to the spear build, once again, we're going to be running Tangin Kujaku. The reason for this is very similar to the spear, and that's the stance-based Amrita bonus. We're going to get a hefty attack boost anytime we absorb Emrita in high stance. Now, once you start fighting, you'll be able to absorb Emrita just over the course of the fight, but for the sake of this build, we'll essentially pop a small spirit stone before we would fight a boss to get that bonus active, and then the bonus will maintain itself as the fight goes on, just from us dealing damage. The reason we want this bonus is because high stance is where you can really do some work with hatchets. Your high stance throws are going to be your beefier throws, and so because of that, we're looking to maximize the damage of those hits. Uh, moving on down, we're bringing along Otakamaru just to have a on-demand nuke if we need it. Beyond that, he serves no purpose other than just being so OP, there's no reason to not run him. Magatsu Warrior, a very solid choice here. The 2% active skill damage is going to synergize with this build, and we have an anima charge bonus based on cumulative damage, which synergizes very well with hatchets because of how fast they strike in your mid and low stance. Lastly, we're going to run a Thunderstorm Oni B Core just to get Lightning Enchanted up on our blade. Ideally, if you have a Maelstrom Oni B, which will allow you to enchant with water, I'd suggest running that instead, just to further amplify the damage of this build. Now, moving on in to some other things here. Uh, as for our secondary Guardian Spirit, we're running in a Sao Sao. That's going to give us a 7.5% damage reduction when we take damage in uh, while attacking in the middle of an attack. And that's obviously just going to synergize even further with the 10% damage reduction we have taken mid-attack with this set already. So because of that, this set gets very tanky when you're in the middle of the fray. If you're trading blows with the enemy, you're not going to really notice that hit. So... And a build that's constantly about attacking, this actually works out pretty well. Uh, moving on over to our skills. First and foremost, let's talk about our hatchet throws. Piercing Hurl, Dual Hurl, and Chain Hurl. Now, out of the three of these, I'd highly suggest you focus on Piercing Hurl. This is the one that's going to deal the most damage. We're going to be picking up Piercing Hurl Light. This allows the charge to go up faster as opposed to Shadow, which will allow it to go even further. Now, while the range can be nice, most of the time, I'd rather get that charge out even quicker, which is why we're going for Light. Uh, we're also going to pick up Dragonfly and Dragonfly 2. This is nice to just toss out and lock it on an enemy for consistent damage. Now, along the lines of throwing, we're also going to do Trained Throw. This allows you to boost the damage even further when you time the throw correctly, and we're going to show off exactly how that works at the start of a mission. Uh, moving down into mid stance, I'd suggest going for Mountain Hawk out of the various combo enders. I found this the most useful. Death from above feels, you know, it leaves you very vulnerable being up in the air, especially against Yokai, whereas Mountain Hawk is just going to be consistent damage. And we also need to pick up Mountain Hawk to get to Spiked Wall, which is a great counterattack. Along the lines of countering, Let's also pick up Wolf's Rage. This is an awesome move that will devastate humans. Basically, if they, if they deflect you whatsoever while you are in mid or low stance, you just tap triangle and your character will shatter both hatchets down on them and usually break their key. Along the note of key, we're also going to want Demon Undercut. This move does a ton of key damage and is absolutely vital against Duncan on humans. As for some yokai, I'd highly suggest Spinning Crab. This ability is great for applying status, especially against bigger yokai, things like Ryumin and whatnot. Uh, Chain Hurl and Mountain Climber. Mountain Climber gives us some mobility, and now that we have Mountain Climber 2, we'll pick that up since we had the point. Now, perhaps the most important part of hatchets is over here. All ablaze. 
What this move does is it essentially gives you an attack increase that's almost similar to Carnage. It's going to boost your attack power, but it's going to bring down your defense. It also gives you a speed bonus very similar to Tiger Running. So essentially we're going to pop all ablaze. We're going to get what's what basically amounts to Carnage and Tiger Running. And then we are going to help counteract that defense loss with a Steel Talisman. This makes us incredibly incredibly strong in the middle of combat while not having to worry about our defense because we've already counteracted it uh, moving on to here advancing storm another great ability anytime you're sprinting you just tap square this is a great opener attack in combat it's a great opener attack anytime you're kind of dashing around the enemy definitely recommend picking that on up uh, as for passives, I'd suggest going for the grapple damage. The hatchet grapple actually happens quite a bit because of how often you break key. Um, beyond that, you could go for the max key on weapon, but I don't consider it necessary. I've never been a fan of things like Indomitable Spirit or Full Mankata. So beyond getting those, I'd suggest you mainly focus on Melee Mastery 1 to just further amplify the damage of your hatchets. Uh, now going on into the skill customization... Lethal Barrage, we're going to put our Courage bonus on. This is our uh, one of our secondary stats, and so we want to boost the damage up this up to make it nice and strong. As for Piercing Light, we're going to be putting our skill bonus on this. Now, you could put this on Lethal Barrage, but Lethal Barrage is a very heavy opening move. Putting it here will make my top stance hatchet throws as brutal as possible because we have 99 in skill. Uh, as for Demon Undercut, definitely Masterful Slice. Increase the key damage of this ability even further. And then on Dragonfly, we're going to put Constitution Bonus because that is another stat we're going to be focusing on with this build. Uh, moving on down, uh, there's really nothing else. But what, one thing you could do, which I've had some luck with this, is on Spinning Crab, you could put something like Arcana of Water or Arcana of Lightning. Uh, Spinning Crab is actually pretty useful at applying status to yokai enemies, so it's something to consider. As for our stats, magic is only going to be at 9 for our Yasakani. Dex is going to be left down at 6. Skill, obviously, we want that as high as possible, so take it on up to 99. Strength at 15 to meet gear requirements. Stamina up to 37 to get us a B in agility. Heart, we're only taking up to 20, which is essentially kind of the soft cap for that. Now, beyond that, I'd suggest splitting your stats between Constitution and Courage. Since this is a beefy build and we're going to be trading blows, we want a hefty amount of Constitution, so we took that up to 50. And then beyond that, we've taken Courage up, which will also scale the damage on our hatchets as well. So now that we've covered on everything, uh, once again, when it comes down to clans, I always recommend Glank Ammo. We get a consecutive attack damage bonus in addition to luck. Just a solid choice. And we're going to be doing in and uh, knocking out the Cursed Castle Ruins. So this is the current Twilight mission for the day. Figured this would be a good opportunity to pick up some Umbrasite in addition to showing how this build works. Uh, now we'll probably speed through a bit of this to fight a human afterwards and show you how it is against a human boss. Uh, but this is a good opportunity to show it off against some beefy yokai. Now, what I want to talk about real fast here before we really jump into this is the trained throw ability and what exactly a correct timing is on this. Now, it's actually pretty tricky to get this. You need to almost predict when the hatchet throw is. You see how I had kind of that blue circle right there? I want to let go of my hatchet right when that second charge would occur. So doing it on the first won't cause it. On the second, it will. Now, it's not to say you can only do it when you have that up. You know, you want to toss out your hatchets uh, regardless. But if you have that buff up, and then we have our high stance and Rita buff up, then you time this right. 97.82 on a hatchet throw. If that's not silly, I don't know what is, because we can spam these things infinitely. Now, obviously, that was also a backstab bonus, which is why it was so strong. But that's to give you an idea of just what the hatchets are capable of. Every now and then, you'll also get a double hit, kind of how you just saw right there. A flip over. Great move to help shatter the heads of Yokai. In this next zone, we're gonna actually we're gonna run straight through, make this a little faster. Pop this just because we're going for a run. Mm -hmm. 
As he managed to block that thing right at the end there. This one, we're actually going to fight our way past quite a few of them. So the main thing here is anytime we are doing this buff, getting that on up, make sure that you have up your defense talisman. big guy you can see just how little damage we took from trading with that yokai right there typically that's a big hit there how we got that heal bonus from the bullseye to the head it's hard to do it consistently but when it goes off it's just it's hilarious getting a bullseye from throwing a hatchet from the spiders. Sorry, my throws are better. Uh, also, on that ability, when you do it, you can hold triangle to make it go longer. Otherwise, you can just tap triangle for a shorter version. Like that. It's also pretty good as a quick tutorial on how to speed through this mission. For all the marbles, can I kill this boss without dying? Make this a perfect run.
You'll see the mid stance doesn't really have the uh, the height. Mid stance will go there, low stance will go low, but that's also one of the reasons why we stick in high stance for most of the stuff. So before the boss, we're gonna pop you. We're going to pop you and you and get some purity because you're kind of a yokai and get this buff up and get our high stance buff up. And here we go. Boom. So for our humanoid opponent, we're gonna be taking on the Obsidian Samurai in a formal match. Good opportunity to show what this can do against humans because this guy is usually considered a uh, pretty beefy opponent. And he's dead already. So that is going to wrap things up for the hatchet build. Uh, definitely a really fun weapon to play with, especially when you build it right. But I will say it is very build dependent. Uh, early on putting this build together, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make a hatchet build. But once I spec towards taking everything and having a focus on high stance, whoo boy, those throws got delicious. So either way, guys, thanks for coming on by and watching. Up next, we are going to have the Omyo slash Switchglaive build, so that should be a lot of fun. And then the last one will be the Axe build that I'll be using for the walkthrough. So as always, I appreciate the support, and I'll see you guys next time with more Neo 2.